My name is Sarah Scott Thompson, and I will be presenting on my thesis that I have completed for the Teaching Fellows Program. The title of my thesis is Benefits and Drawbacks of Different School Settings for Middle School Students. I will begin by discussing information from my literature review about four different types of schools, traditional public, charter, non-religious private, and private Christian schools, and will also discuss from my literature review autonomous schooling in middle school students. I will then discuss my method of research, results, and discussion of the results of my study. The first public schools in colonial America were an extension of the home and the church. Students went to school to learn to read for religious purposes. Over time, schooling became more important. More people attended school for longer amounts of time, and school became associated with preparation for life and for work. Charity schools were established to educate poor children. These were one of the first publicly supported non-church schools. By the mid-1800s, most large cities had public school systems, many of which started with these charity schools. Today, the role of American public education is to teach reading, writing, arithmetic, and what it means to be an American citizen. Public schools aim to teach students content and prepare them to contribute to society. Moral and social learning is a purpose of schooling in the United States that is mandated. A poll that I read indicates that three of four Americans trust and have confidence in the people who teach their children in public schools. Parents believe the biggest challenge facing schools in their communities was lack of funding. Many Americans believe that the quality of education differs greatly between school districts and their state. A parent noted that the quality of education in urban schools is much lower than the quality of education in suburban schools, creating an achievement gap. Charter schools are public schools that are governed by the community of the school instead of the district to which they belong. They are publicly funded. Charter schools were started as a school reform idea because of their flexibility and the possibility of increasing student achievement. Charter schools must meet the same accountability standards as other public schools, which vary from state to state. Oversight for charter schools also varies between states. Charter schools seem to provide more opportunities for unique programs. They also create the potential of providing a more effective or fitting educational experience for students. In 2009, charter schools showed slightly higher achievement of students. This study also showed that minority students are more successful in charter schools than traditional public schools. According to a study conducted in 2001, charter school teachers seem to be overwhelmed and too busy. In a more recent article published in 2018, the author notes that schools in Durham were more segregated by race and class as a result of school choice. Charter schools may draw students and resources away from traditional public schools. Private schools have more freedom to adapt structures, expectations, requirements, and opportunities available to students. Most private schools require students to apply and pay tuition. Building character seems to be important to many private schools. Students are often expected to participate in extracurricular activities. Private schools have the opportunity to be single sex and or a boring school. Teachers at private schools tend to know their students well as a participation, as a result of participation in co-curricular programs, sports, and mentoring relationships. There is a lot of support for teachers at many private schools, such as teacher expert consultations, freedom to use different teaching techniques, and different opportunities for professional development. Private schools often have smaller class sizes, better facilities, extracurricular op opportunities, and higher acceptance rates to high-rated universities. An obvious disadvantage of private schools is tuition, but many private schools offer financial assistance. Private schools require students to apply. It is possible that private schools can be socially exclusive. People may be disadvantaged because of circumstances that they cannot control, causing them not to be able to pay tuition. In the mid-1960s, religion was taken out of public schools in the United States. As a result, Christian schools grew significantly. In 2006, Christian schools represented 15% of total private school enrollment in the United States. Private Christian schools can be associated with a specific church or denomination or can be non-denominational. These schools focus on the Christian faith, incorporating faith into many different aspects of education. Private schools can be developed from visions and ideas of a group of people, allowing them to organize a school in a way that they feel would be most beneficial to their children. Schools can be associated with a church or non-denominational, allowing for many different options of Christian schools for parents and students. 
Students can come from many different school districts and often different churches. Christian schools tend to have core values of academic excellence and a Christ-centered environment. The cons associated with non-religious private schools are also true for private Christian schools, such as tuition, applying to the schools, and the possibility of being socially exclusive. Different types of schools may choose different methods of working toward the same goal of preparing students to contribute to society. These varying methods have, over time, contributed to autonomous schooling. The idea that students and parents have a choice of which school they or their children attend. Students may attend the traditional public school to which they are districted, or choose to attend or apply to different schools, such as private schools and charter schools. As more schools are developed, this choice becomes harder. School autonomy is believed to improve all schools since they have to compete for students. Middle school students go through a lot of de developmental changes during their young adolescence. Students experience physical changes during their middle school years, which can lead to a drop in confidence in adolescents. Young adolescents are vulnerable emotionally, making them more likely to be hurt. Because of changes happening in their brains, adolescents believe that they are constantly being watched. They struggle with the idea of growing up and feel like they have to grow up. Young adolescents begin making their own decisions, taking risks, and seeking to figure out who they are. They also begin to challenge ideas that they have always known as fact. During young adolescence, students are developing morally. Many different factors, such as feedback from others, observing others, and reflecting on their own experience help adolescents form these moral identities. Relationships are extremely important to middle school students. As teens' emotional maturity increases, it changes their relationships. Adolescents begin to turn to each other instead of turning to their families. This study examined students' opinions on the benefits and drawbacks of different middle school settings. As was described previously, a lot of the literature discussed benefits and drawbacks in the eyes of parents, teachers, and other educators. I did not find literature that examined students' opinions. This study will further the existing knowledge in this area by providing student perspectives on benefits and drawbacks of their middle schools. For the purpose of this research, I interviewed eight students from four different school settings, asking them to share their opinions and experiences about their middle schools. Since the participants are all minors, their parents were emailed in order to receive permission for their children to participate in this research. The participants answered questions orally. I recorded in writing as much of what the participants said as I could during the interview. The participants of this study were students who were in middle school or who had recently finished middle school. All participants were female. Parents of 12 students were asked for permission for their children to participate, but only eight students' parents chose for their children to participate. Participants attended six different middle schools, including traditional public schools, charter schools, a private Christian school, and a non-religious private school. Four participants were in seventh grade and four participants were in ninth grade at the time of the interviews. The interview data collected was read from beginning to end. Then the interviews were reread, highlighting answers that related to answers given by students in other interviews. Highlighted data was then put into a new document and organized into categories with similar data. Categories were then analyzed for themes. I will share results from the study, including answers given by middle school students that were interviewed. The following themes emerged from my data analysis, extracurricular activities, relationships, academics, transitions, school environment, and school satisfaction. Every student that was interviewed valued her participation in her school's extracurricular activities, such as athletics. Students from both types of private schools and a charter school mentioned that many of their sports teams do not make cuts, but allow everyone to participate. These students appreciate that they have the opportunity to participate in sports in order to build skills. Students at these schools are able to, to participate in sports every year of middle school. None of the students from traditional public and charter schools have participated in school sports due to lack of interest. One of the charter schools does not have athletics, but the other students said that their schools have a lot of options for sports. A student from a traditional public school said that sixth grade students are not allowed to participate in school sports in order to help them transition into middle school without the extra activities. Students also value their participation in clubs. A student at a non-religious private school and a student from a charter school said that their schools do not have many options of clubs and activities. 
while our schools offer few options because the school is so small, they stated that they have more, more opportunities to be very active in the extracurriculars that the school does offer. Anyone is able to join clubs at these schools. Students describe their relationships with both teachers and peers. Students from all types of schools said that they have relationships with their teachers, but students from both types of private schools seem to have more close relationships with their teachers. One student from a private Christian school noted that because classes are small, teachers know all of their students' strengths and weaknesses. A student from a charter school shared that she was like best friends with one of her teachers and told her everything. Students from private and charter schools shared that they know everyone in their grades since their schools are so small. A student from a private Christian school and a student from a charter school told me that they like being able to know everyone in their grades but they don't like that everybody knows their business. Both students from traditional public schools said that they did not know everyone in all of their classes. Many interview participants discussed academic rigor. One student from a traditional public school did not feel challenged at her middle school. A student from another, another traditional public school said that she benefits from the special education classes that are offered at her school and that the teachers are able to help students in smaller groups. A student from a non-religious private school, said that she chose to attend her school because she wanted to be challenged academically. A student from a private Christian school felt that her school is challenging. However, some students have trouble in a class at this school, and since there is often not a lower level class offered, they may struggle and may even have to leave the school. Students told me about electives offered at their schools. Public schools seem to have more choices of electives for students to take, but all students valued their participation in electives. All interview participants were asked about their transitions from elementary school to middle school. Students who attended the same school for elementary and middle school did not have as much trouble adjusting to middle school as students who switched schools. However, these students still had a bit of trouble adjusting to the workload and to switching classes. A student who transitioned from a traditional public elementary school to a traditional public middle school said that she had to adjust to having six teachers instead of one and having more homework. She said that she knew that there would be a lot of work in sixth grade, but looking back, the work wasn't that bad. Students who were interviewed discussed aspects of their school's environments, including facilities, interactions between students, and uniforms. A student from a traditional public school appreciates that students at her middle school have many different opinions and perspectives. A student from a charter school shared that she likes that some of her teachers use paper, which she prefers over the use of technology. A student from a non-religious private school appreciates that her school is understanding and flexible, excusing any absence as long as they make up their work. Students from a private Christian school like that they have catered hot lunches and that the campus is clean, has different places to hang out, and has nice fields and organized classrooms. Students from private and charter schools told me about uniforms. They mentioned liking that they don't have to pick out their outfits and that there is no pressure to dress a certain way. For students who started attending their school or type of school in elementary school, it was their parents' decision. These decisions were made because parents believed that the schools had strong educational programs, would be able to fit unique needs of their child based on what they had seen in their own school experiences, thought their child would be more successful in a smaller community, and or wanted their child's education to be faith-based. When the decision to attend a new school was made in early middle school, sixth grade, the choice was somewhat equally of the, parent, of the student and her parents. For students who switched schools in later middle school, seventh or eighth grade, the choice was mostly the students. Students seemed to be most satisf satisfied with their school choice when it was their own decision. However, students who attended the same school since kindergarten are, were also satisfied with their schools. Many students who were interviewed discussed making decisions. Because of their cognitive development, young adolescents are becoming able to weigh different options and make educated decisions. Students who made decisions about their own schooling, schooling during their middle school years were developing decision-making skills and self-awareness by considering what would be best for them. 
Young adolescents are working to form their own identities. They try new things and play new roles, which is why some students value participation in extracurricular activities. Some students appreciated diverse beliefs of classmates because they're learning to challenge ideas they have always known as fact. A few students from small, charter and private schools mentioned that they like being able to know everyone in their grade, but do not like that it seems like everyone knows their business. This is a result of adolescent egocentrism. Adolescents are preoccupied with their own behavior and appearance. They believe that others are always watching them and believe that they know what other people are thinking. Young adolescents' emotional maturity is increasing, which allows them to be more vulnerable and emotionally intimate with others. Young adolescent girls are always looking for people with whom they can safely speak and be vulnerable. Some students from my study told me about having relationships with this type of teachers. Thank you for watching my presentation.